why don't we kick it off? And um, I, I want to talk about uh, if it's okay with you guys, like I want to talk about the struggle for a little bit, uh, how you guys deal with um, bumps in the road, we'll call them, or, you know, when you start to feel the shift, um, you know, uh, some people think that the stress stops when you get a big business. I know that you guys will probably laugh at that because it, it's not true, but I think we right. need to help everybody by, you know, things always aren't easy. And, and you know, I want to hear about how you guys are doing it and, uh, and kick it off there if that's okay with everybody else. Jeff, if you don't mind. Yeah, definitely. I, I'd love to focus first on just the, the mindset of, yeah. you know, what's going on in the market, what's happening right now. And we'd love to hear from both of you. Yeah, definitely. Right. We uh, we kind of stepped in with uh, having our agents really focus on the data and the right data. And I think that's an important talking point because there is so much news and so much nonsense being thrown around and so much scare tactics, if you will, with big media uh, talking about the market. And so we're having them focus on the actual metrics that matter, like the actual MLS data and knowing the data is comforting and it allows you to have more educated conversations with your clients. Yeah, smart. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, to Curtis's point, we're doing the same thing. I mean, like I said, we started uh, probably 75 days ago, just started really looking at everything even deeper. Um, started looking at data in the market, uh, the data in our databases, um, just working with our team, just getting even closer, making sure that we're really dialed into our team meetings, our role plays, our huddle ups to make sure the mindset is not fearful, but but it's it's aware, right? It's aware, it's it's knowledgeable, not fearful, but knowledgeable. And then understanding the the fears in the sellers and buyers' minds and really just slowing down for a moment, making sure that our databases we're, we're really deeply connected and teaching the agents to deeply connect with their clients even more than they ever had on the front end to truly get to know them, understand, understand where their real motivation is and see if you can serve them no matter what the market just even more intentional now. So the data doesn't lie. And, um, and and I'll tell you what, it's kind of like we always talk about going back to the basics, the communication, the collaboration, the relationship with the client. I think you just need to slow down a little for a minute and get even better with it now. Hmm. Really interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. To What's add to that real Barry? quick, actually, real oh, go quick. Ahead, um, yeah, the, uh, the communication with the client is super important, but we actually up the communication internally as well. So our team's not yeah. massive. We're only 17 people. But communication breaks down as soon as you start to add a few agents mm. and things start to get stressful. And so we have an 845 Zoom meeting uh, mandatory with our entire team every day, Monday through Friday, uh, just to mm. make sure the message is relevant, making sure they're having conversations with one another. And then they get to hear from each other that they're, you know, this person's struggling or this happened to them yesterday. We get to chat about it as a collective group. And that way everyone feels comfortable, like, hey, this isn't just happening to me. I'm not the only one losing out on offers or whatever the case may be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But like, so so let's take this just a step further so let's just assume somebody is is watching this either recording or uh they're they're live right now and um they are running their business off of their credit cards right now you know um i've been there um and uh and so they they need to make money right uh before we get into the tactical of, of what they need to do to generate business how how do they how would you deal with that in the sense of how do you, do you stay motivated or do you will yourself to get the job done? You know, you guys have obviously experienced failure before. How do you deal with failure or how would you recommend if I was sitting in front of you and I said, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm running on fumes. Um, I'm really discouraged and I don't know if I can keep going. Like, I know I'm putting you guys on the spot and I didn't tell you I was going to ask you that. But what would, you know, who wants to go first? Yeah, I mean, we really broke it down to the four basics on our team to tell every agent and it just kind of reset. It doesn't matter if you've been doing this for 20 years or 20 days is know the data locally, right? That's going to make sure that your conversations are being tactful with the actual client. Follow some sort of standard. We have our own team standards, but if you're just running as an individual or starting your own team, you should have some sort of standard, whether that's with your CRM or your follow-up, or your prospecting, whatever it may be contact rate, right? right? And then practice your skills. I think a lot of people got away from practicing during COVID because it was so easy and so quick. Pricing a home wasn't hard. You never had to do price reductions. Uh, the biggest thing you maybe needed to practice was negotiations because you had so many offers, right? And then uh, last thing is perform massive activities. Whatever you were doing during COVID time and when the market was kind of lifting a lot of people up, you should probably double or triple down on whatever that is. So if you're making 10 contacts, you should be making at least 30 a day right now because people are taking longer to make decisions and things are just going to take a little bit longer. So you have to touch more people. 
So what I'm taking away from that, if I was sitting in front of you, is you're just basically, you're giving me, okay, this is what you need to do. Just go do it. Is that more or less like, is that a good oversimplification? Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Great. Scott, what would you like, you know, from your perspective? Yeah, it's all very, it's all very similar. We always try to, um, I think sometimes overcomplicate things when markets and things shift, you know, but I mean, there's, there's four simple things that we, we focus on as well, always. And it's even, you know, obviously more intentional on the activities during this time, but the first so it's four S's. The first is keep it simple, right? So keep it simple and really stay focused on your morning routine, blocking of the time and your daily activities. And 80% or more of your time needs to be focused on setting an appointment, getting something signed would be the next one and selling something. And so it's simple, set, sign, sell. And so it is and, but, you know, a lot of folks, whenever things were going really, really well, they forgot, they got out of their morning routine, yeah. right? And they stopped focusing on things because almost, let's be kind of, uh, have some fun with it. Things were almost getting set for them in a way. Right. Some things were getting sold for them and, you know, and they, and half of them forgot to actually sign buyer's agencies and get things signed because things were moving so quickly. So it's just get back to the basics and make sure that you are absolutely winning your morning, doing those things. And to Curtis's point, you probably, you know, if you were making 10 contacts a day consistently or 15, you probably want to go to 15 to 25. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's going to yeah. take a few, it's going to take a few more contacts to actually get that motivated buyer seller. And I, I'd love to dive in there and elaborate on that, Scott, and, and what you said as well, Curtis. So when I was a sales manager, I described it to my sales reps this way. Most sales professionals focus on results rather than actions. And if you imagine yeah. like results is written on a whiteboard up here and actions is, is written on a whiteboard up here and there's arrows to them. If you focus on results, what happens is that entrepreneurial roller coaster. Yeah. You start to get some commission checks on the horizon, some deal signs, some things coming in. You stop doing what got you there. You stop focusing on those actions. Yep. And that's when you get really excited, money's good, and then all of a sudden bank accounts dry again, you're living on, you know, you're running your business on your credit cards and you, you know, now you're back into action, right? right. So to then, to flip that and then create consistency, uh, what, what I've always done, because my sales experience was during the 2009 session, I got into direct sales because no one else was hiring. I was just right. out of high school. Right. And so right. I, I had to, I had to go, you know, make phone calls and make my own reality. And so... I realized if I focus on actions, if I focused mm -hmm. on the phone calls per day, the sets per day, the, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, the appointments, the demos, if, if that all happens, no matter, you know, what happens at those appointments, the ratios of big numbers will work out. Right. And, yep. and most of us in sales have experienced that at a high degree, you put massive action out there and the ratios start to work out and you have success. So mm -hmm. what I heard from both of you is focus on actions now more than ever. Tune yeah. out, tune out the, you know, the news that's telling you the world's all, all falling down and, you know, tune out last year's numbers that you, you might not hit or you might hit. And none of that matters. What matters is the actions today, right? Keep it back to the simple basics of what Absolutely. gets you deals. And, you know, prospecting I, fixes everything. Yeah, it really yeah. does. It really does. When I, um, I've always been a pretty motivated person and like goals weren't really a thing that helped me um, until I realized it would actually, it was exercising that taught me these lessons because I never feel like it. Um, and I always like mentally sell myself on reasons why I shouldn't or can't or don't have enough time. And um, what I realized is that goal setting uh, allows you to work when motivation runs out. And so, you know, what you heard from two very successful and Jeff, you know, as well, uh, all three very successful business owners and team owners and marketing specialists that you just got to do the work. And if you're running your business off of how you feel, that feelings are fickle. They're here one minute and gone Ooh. the next. Mm. Scott, you, you agree? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you got to stay out of the feelings and the theory around things. Um, if anybody's own here that's been you know think about this for a moment if you were in the business when when COVID and the pandemic hit what did we do then well that was something that nobody has really seen and so everybody's like what do we do well 
the only thing, you know, and I don't claim to be a brain surgeon, just very, I mean, you can see my shirt says take action, right? I mean, <laughs> um, I do love to stay in action and I'm super competitive, but the only thing that I knew to do, and we brought everybody together on Zoom, right? Because everybody's in their, you know, their homes. And we just went into massive action into our database. We started doubling and tripling down. I was involved with the agents. I was actually showing them how to deeply qualify a client. They'd see all the notes and this, that, and the other. And it's funny for the first few weeks, everybody was super fearful. And they were like, they call me coach. They're like, coach is crazy, you know, but we're, we were doing it every day, every, and finally they're like, okay, yeah, we're in this thing. And, and funny enough, as, as, as the time went on, it just evolved. And, and we came out the other side with a ton of clients simply because we were going into the relational conversations, right? Just checking in with mm -hmm. people, seeing how they're doing, building relationships. But the whole moral to the story was back to the basics. You know, I mean, if you want to be a 90% free throw shooter, shoot a thousand free throws a day. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, that it's just, it's just, it's such sports is such a great analogy to life and business. Oh yeah. Um, yep. you know, it just, it just, it's just such a great analogy. So I just think I can't imagine that not being, like you're going to win right now. Um, and one other thing that's happening and everybody's probably seeing it and, and, and guys markets is, you know, we're in a bunch of, we're in a bunch of conversations. We're growing and scaling our business. Um, a lot of agents out there that are solo agents are realizing that their solo plan wasn't working all that fantastic. And they're starting to get more conversations. We're working with bigger teams that actually have massive databases and actual plans. Um, so it's, it's a thing. It's actually in the works right now. Oh yeah. On that. On that point, we're actually trying to be proactive and trying to find agents who have been in the business a long time in our marketplace because mm -hmm. they've seen these ups and down cycles. And if they're yeah. towards the end of their career, there's a good chance they're going to want to do a golden handoff and sell their database of people, yeah. right? And Great so point. there's yeah. huge opportunity out there right now because there's people that do not want to go back through a downturn of a market, which is obviously going to have somewhat of a downturn coming up. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Great you know, point. Uh, you brought up, um, yeah, it's actually buying other people's database is really smart. <laughs> uh, but Scott, you brought up um, about when COVID hit, um, you know, I went through 2008 and I waited for everything to go back to whatever normal was and I starved right. for a year. And so yeah. I remember it was like March, whatever, like the day after everything hit the fan. Right. And I remember on the huddle, I said, guys, I hope everything goes back to what we believe is normal tomorrow but we are not going to wait. I waited around in 2008. This mm. time we're going to pivot real fast. We're mm -hmm. going to do video tours. We're going to sell homes virtually. What, you mm -hmm. know, if there are, if there's one person in our area that wants to buy a home, we're going to be a part of the conversation because of remarketing. And it, you know, the same experience what you were saying, sharing Scott, that, um, and I think people need to hear that. They need to hear how we've dealt with ongoing challenges in the business. And I, I have to ask your, you know, uh, apologize to the two of you because I didn't, they don't even know some of these guys watching might not know why they should be even listening to you. Scott, can you take a second and tell them a little bit about your team and why, you know, why we asked you to be on? Yeah, man. So um, I'll just, I'll move through it pretty quickly. I've been in business for 24 years. We started this team, done a bunch, my best year in sales ever. I, I closed 130 homes at 45 million by myself. Um, but I started this team six years ago. We ramped it up to a hundred million dollar team in three years. Uh, COVID hit and well, you know, right, right about that time COVID came in or whatever. And we scaled back. We had some, um, some cultural things that weren't quite right and infrastructure. So we scaled it back to seven agents uh, last year, we did 106 million with seven agents. Uh, we rebranded the company, uh, went from the Tremblay Group to Oak and Ocean. Uh, this year, we're on track to do about 150, 160. And that's really been with, with eight agents, but we've hired five more now. So now we have 13. And we're in conversation with um, just this week with uh, seven other agents that in production is about 60 million. So we're on track in terms of our growth and where we're headed by March of 2000. Um, uh, 23, 2023 next year, we will be a $250 million team going forward. Wow. So we've built, we've built every, all the infrastructure and everything to do it. And thankfully we've built a massive database. We communicate heavily. So we're built for shifts and uh, change. Curtis. Excellent. Yeah. That was that. Yeah, yeah, awesome. That's impressive. I'm yeah, impressed. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm impressed too. Uh, I've been on the team here for six years. I came uh, Brady had a very, very small team when I came over. I used to work at Zillow before that for three years right there in Irvine where Jeff's at. 
And uh, so came over here to run all these systems and we just started from the ground up at like 40 million and we did 207 million last year and 255 nice. units. And we only have eight agents actually sell, 17 team members, almost all of them uh, licensed just because uh, California loves their disclosures and their escrow process. So it uh, takes an <laughs> army to get a home closed, but uh, right. we've had some massive growth that we're not looking to grow with a ton of agents. We are looking for agents with high production per agent. And uh, you know we try to keep it as small as possible, but to keep the production high. Yeah, that's right. awesome. So I'd love to pose the next question, if that's okay, Barry. Go for so it. the title of this, this uh, podcast or this webinar is The Market is Shifting. Here's where top teams are not cutting their marketing dollars. So what I would love to hear next is the answer to that question, not leaning into the fear as a business owner of, uh-oh, things are changing. I need to cut expenses. I'm going to cut my marketing. It's such a knee-jerk reaction. I, I see it happen all the time. So what are you absolutely not taking off the board when you're looking at you know, the next six, 12, 18 months and uh, you know, a potential significant market shift not in the, the wrong direction? I mean, I'll give you guys a shameless plug. Why Lopo is one of them. Uh, you know, the uh, remarketing, retargeting is uh, amazing. You know, we have a 20,000 person database, not massive, but it's, we're continuing to grow it. And it's an easy way to add an extra touch or two uh, on top of our calls and newsletter and such. Uh, and then anything Google related. I, I'm a true believer that Google is the next big player. I think Zillow, Redfin, and all the other uh, lead sources, if you will, out there for so long are certain to... Uh, lose a little bit of market share. I mean, Google really changed things with local service ads and the way they do SEO and pay-per-click and all that. And so, uh, and with the changes to Facebook as well, leads have obviously diminished there. So anything Google, we've really just put the pedal down on. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah. So um, I'll back it, man. I mean, I mean, it seems like Curtis and I seem like, I think we need to hook up because we're on the same page with most of the stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but I mean, but you know, I, I tell you one thing for us is, um, cause I've been around for a minute, you know, for 24 years, I knew this was coming. And, uh, and honestly, that was, that was a big part. And this is a wild open plug in, but it's the truth. That was a big part of establishing the relationship with Y Lopo about 20 months ago, simply because to re get away from Zillow and realtor and start building a massive database, build out an ISA team that's second to none. So we have five intern uh, inside sales agents and actually start getting really, really, really intentional and really good and communicating the database. So, we're not, we're, we, we build it for this time. So the, uh, the Y Lopo, the Google, the LSA, the remarketing, same exact things. I mean, we are, uh, we've actually funny enough, we've been ramping that up. Um, but when you look at like building a business and, you know, revenue versus expenses, we've been ramping that up, but it's way, this is what's beautiful about Y Lopo and the platform. It's way less than what we did before with Zillow and Realtor with better results. So yeah. Boom. It's, yeah. It, and it's hard, you know, just hearing you guys talk about it made me reflect because it took me five years to come off of the Zillow and the Realtor, depending on them in any capacity. Like I had to slowly wean myself off of it because, you know, you don't want to just go from, so let's say, let's, let's stop picking on the portals and let's talk about some of the referral organizations. Nothing wrong with any of them, like Homelight and all these others. Like it's hard when your business has been based off of referrals from referral companies that are taking a third. And then, you know, now we're saying you should be spending your money on remarketing and spend your time doing follow-up because the, the Homelight referral, the assumption is it's going to be closing in the next 60 days. And if I got to get my paycheck, you know, I'm, I'm going to focus there. But we've got to we've got to think about now. But we also have to think about three, four months down yeah, the road. That. Yeah, yeah. You Even further, to. yeah, three, four years down the road. Yep. Yes. That's well, awesome. and I had some team members in 2017 that thought I was crazy. Everybody was making money off of Zillow except me. Like I spent eight hundred thousand dollars in one year, and I think I made like fifty. I think that was yeah. my net. I was like, this is not like, what, what is this? Um, I'd rather put it in treasury bonds or something, you know, like, so, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But, so, yeah. So you I spent mean, like 800 and you cleared like 850. Is that what you, yeah. that's your Yeah. Yeah. My lender so, made money, my agent, my broker. Everyone, everyone made money but you. Money yeah. Except for me. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, the average sales price in my market was like 250,000. So it just, it was hard. I, and so I got squeezed out. Um, 
but I think there is a real temptation to hold on to our cash when the, the big R word recession is being thrown around. Like there's a, there's a general fear uh, on most business owners to continue to spend money. And, uh, and so, you know, when you guys have gone through other, you know, like, especially with Scott, with, with the stuff that you've shared, I feel like your team, you've gone through some challenging markets. Like, what would you say to somebody about not backing off, but, you know, staying the course? Um, is that easy for you? Like, is it easy for you right now to do? Or do you worry about it at all? Or uh, like, how do you, how do you deal with it? And I'm getting real. I'm sorry, guys. You might never no. want to be on a webinar with Jeff and I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's, you know, it's, it's, that's a tough question for me a little bit because those that know me are like, this dude's not scared of anything. Um, and, and, and so I'm, I'm really not, but I, you know, I, I learned this business 24 years ago from some sp pretty smart people that said, you gotta, you gotta win the morning to build a database. You gotta be in communication. Like, you know, it, it was 25, it was here, 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 here's what it was. It was 300 calls a day. It was 25 contacts a day. I wanted to set one hot buyer seller and three to four nurturers. 8 to 11, Monday through Friday, Tuesday and Thursday evening, 6 to 8, every other Saturday, 9 to 1. That's where you'd find me. There wasn't very many other people around me, right? right? But that's where you'd find me, right? So I learned it that way. And, uh, and so it's really no different, um, really no different now. Like, and, and then I'll, I'll share one other thing. Um, you know, we've had a great, I have a fantastic relationship with Keller Williams and uh, with, with Gary and with it's a lot of other leaders in, in Keller. And, you know, here, here's, I have the same story, but it's probably a little bit more powerful because it's a uh, Gary Keller story, probably a little bit more powerful. But Gary's is this, his first year in real estate, he comes home at Christmas time and says, dad, I need a $1,500 investment. I've been working my butt off. And, uh, but I, I think I'm really going to start, you know, gaining some traction. And his dad said, uh, like, how do I know you've been working? Because he hadn't made any money and he's like almost broke. And so he goes and gets his file cabinet out of his car. And pulls up, you know, this is years, this is 40 years ago, whatever it was. Um, and he pulls it out and he has January through December and he has all these cards, all these note cards, right? With all these clients, he starts reading them off to his dad. I mean, this is Gary, this is G Gary Keller, right? And, and, and his dad said, okay, I'll, I'll invest $1,500. You've actually been doing some work. Um, so there's nothing easy. We always talk around here. I mean, nothing's given, everything's earned. There's nothing easy about success. There's nothing easy about winning at things. Um, I think right now, I mean, back when the market turned in uh, 2008, 2009, this, that, and the other, 300,000 agents went out of the market over the yep. next two years, yep. right? So the beautiful thing about now is those that really want to get good at this and surround yourself with people that have been there maybe a little bit and that actually have those daily activities and that discipline, and you got to stay the course. You, you got to stay the course, and you got to build relationships, and you got to build a database, and you got to communicate deeply with it. We're blessed in our company. We've built a company around that with amazing ISAs and agents that understand that. But you've got to stay the course. And so maybe it's important to, even if you, either you join a team or you just align yourself with some super successful agents that have that discipline and routine. Yep. You know, and nice. I'll share one. I'll share one little thing, like to the point that this is what we used to do. In the morning, we all, we, we put in a $150 check. All of us, these, these are five agents that I worked with 24 years ago. And we stuck it on the wall at the, and, and, and you know, then, I mean, that was a, I mean, I, $150, I didn't want to lose that, right? <laughs> we had to be in the gym at 610, 611, you lose the money and they go to, they go to dinner or lunch on it. We had to be in the office at 750 on the phones at eight. Mm -hmm. I was the only one, nobody ever cashed my check. Like it's just, discipline root you've got to stay disciplined and you've got to quit overthinking this thing of course use different technology remarketing it's amazing right to stay communicated often it's unbelievable to identify gaps right but you've got to decide you know part of part of being successful is like knowing where you are and deciding where you want to go right. and then trying to figure out like how to create a path and stay in on that course versus jump all over the place so, so I, I'll get off my horse. I'm sorry. No, no, don't apologize. Like you're helping me. <laughs> this is good stuff, man. 
Um, yeah. Scott said something really powerful there, and we talk about it a lot on our team, is discipline's way more important than motivation. Motivation will fade. You can yeah. only be motivated for so long. Discipline's what's actually going to get you where you're going to go. Um, so that you hit it right there. And then as far as, you know, spending money on things, um, yes, it's not fun to look at a PL and like live off a credit card. And we haven't always been successful as a team since I've been here, but um, we've had some success as of late, but it is an investment. You got to remember that as well. And investments are mm. compounding. They take time. It's not mm. just as give Zillow a thousand dollars and expect 20,000 the next month. It's just not how it works. And that's for any program, including Wailopo, right? Um, so know that. Um, and then, you know, the last thing is, you know, you can get creative with it. There's a ton of stuff out there that you can do for bas basically free uh, to get business. You know, a mojo mm -hmm. dialer is not very expensive. The data is like 50 bucks a month. I yep. mean, most people spend most more than that on, you know, junk food or Postmates or something. Right. So if you're really interested in like being successful, there's ways to do it without spending a lot of money. And then last little plug to KW, like Scott was saying, that's a huge network. If you're part of a brokerage like that or any brokerage for that matter, um, th we did 60 units of our 255 last year, referral from agent, people sending us their clients, 60. Yeah. And we spent a lot of time spending time actually marketing to agents, not just clients, buyers and sellers, because agents need to send their, their clients some well. And people that are active in real estate and talking to their database, like Scott. And I sent Scott a referral, funny enough, before we hopped on this call, I've never talked to Scott before, but I sent him his yeah. team a referral about a year ago, uh, family friends of mine. Right. And so they, it's constantly happening. Those agents that are in business are going to be sending referrals out. You should be connecting with them. And on that point, there's a site True. called uh, How Money Walks. I don't know if anyone's ever looked at that. Mm -mm. There's right a, now, it's a great website. It'll show you the data county by county where uh, income is being transferred. And so you can look up your county and you can see where wealth is going, where people are moving to, and where wealth is coming from. And I strongly suggest yeah. you go target those counties and find top agents in those areas and become mm -hmm. friends with them and referral partners. Love that. Really good advice. You know, I never really valued that the whole like, um, like networking with agents. I would always like, oh, sh whatever. Yeah, there's and, agents. You know, right? Like yeah. I started doing this stuff with Wilopo, no. and I, I don't go a month without a referral from somebody. Um, I, it, I mean, it's turned into like a thing. Um, so no, that makes a ton of sense. And in 2011, it was a hot mess for me. You know, we, we 2008, you know, I was trying to get back to where uh, I, I worked insurance during the day because I liked being able to pay my bills and I did real estate at night. And 2011 was when I made the bridge back to just full time real estate. And it was ugly. Like it was not like, but I made my first million in 2011. Mm. And nobody would hire me in 2009. Like I became a millionaire in 2011 and I'm not saying that braggadociously, but I, I, somebody was crazy enough to loan me a lot of money and I bought a lot of houses, right? Like that's, yeah. that's what happened. Yeah. And, and, and so then, then I was like, man, I'm too busy off of this. Let me talk to some people about a team. And everybody said the same thing. Don't do it. It's a mess. I tried it. They all leave. And all mm -hmm. I knew was I need help and I'm, I'm, I can't stay at this pace. And so you know, I just tried to make the best decisions I could with the information I had at the time. A decade later, now I've got this huge business and all these things are great, but it never stops. And that's that's the message that I'm hearing from Curtis and Scott and Jeff. You know, I, I love to hear what you have to say about this or what your takeaways from them as well. But like for me, it, it, the decision to level up never stops. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, absolutely. And what's behind Scott says it perfectly coachable, right? That, that constant <laughs> yeah. and never ending improvement is, yeah. is so important. And you know, what I'm really curious about is over the last six months, as we've seen interest rates go from the mid twos to 6% plus, and a lot of the buyer traffic has slowed down. And then also some more listings have come on the market. We've been in this shift that's happened. So I'm curious as you've been sticking to your, you know, why local remarketing, the Google advertising, the, the things that you mentioned, staying in, in the actions, you know, what are some of the results that you've seen? I'd love to get some, now let's start looking at the data and give some hope from that. So we have different stages in follow boss um, and they kind of categorize the time frame in which the buyer's looking to buy. I'm sure most people have their system set up accordingly, uh, but we're just seeing a lot more nurtures. People that are just gonna take a little bit longer to make a decision is really what's happening as, as a result of that. Uh, and we're seeing way more dials to contacts. You're gonna have to try more people to get more people on the phone, simple, simply put, right? So 
Uh, we also have a shark tank is what we call it or a pond system. We actually created it before Fall Boss created the pond system, but it basically is all the stale leads are uninterested or just couldn't get approved at one point in time. And we're having our ISAs go back through. It's about 4,000 people going back through there and just, you know, cultivating old relationships from maybe five-year-old Zillow leads, stuff like that, right? Um, so we're spending a lot of time, uh, like Scott was talking about, spending time in our database, but we're just finding that people are taking longer to make decisions. Yeah, and I'll get, so like some actual, you know, on that, uh, Jeff, that question, I mean, you know, some actual data I got right here in front of me, I feel like with, with Wild Opo and, and how we've worked that database and gotten attention with it. So we've, we're at 65 closed and pending with uh, Wild Opo this year at 19.6 million at about a 4.8x return. That return is after remarketing, what we spent on Google SA, PPC, and, and that, that return is what, you know, we make after paying agents. And so it's actually a, a real return. So, but the beautiful thing about it, so that's a, that's a decent number. Uh, we're, you know, we're building that. Here's the beautiful thing. The, the nurtures that uh, we were just talking about, Chris was talking about, our database, the hot swarms and nurtures. This is where people, I think, forget in terms of like that 4.8 could be, it's, it, I mean, it could literally be a 9.8 because of this data. We have 125 hot clients in our database right now that are ready to buy or sell that are from Wallopo. And that's where they buy or sell within. And so our qualifications for a hot is within 30 days. We have 84 warms. That's a 30 to 90 day. These are all from Wallopo, Google, clicked appointment, this, that, and the other. We have 99 nurtures, right? So that's, that's 308 clients right there that's not in the closed and pending. But mm -hmm. if we do our job, and that's just the nurture. That doesn't include watches and the, you know, the colds out there and all the stuff we have automated. If we just do our job, if we just do our job and communicate with them, right, and follow up and set the appointments and bring the level of service that we know we need to bring, that's another about, for us, in terms of our conversion rate, that's about 45 more deals right there that's not in the closed and pending. Right. So it, it, it is all about the repetition in terms of, because and you build that, like Barry was saying, you, you build it. And we made a decision basically 20 months ago to change a, a few things, get out of Zillow and Realtor, and get out of the okay, low hanging fruit. These these leads are ready to go and close in 30 or 60 days or what have you. We ran some data that the appointments, this is an interesting one. Um, and Travis ran this, but the appointments that we're setting, and we're average, our ISAs will set two qualified appointments minimum a day and four nurtures. So we got five by say, so we'll do about 60 a week, right? And that's actually growing right now. But the appointments that we're setting for our agents, we got the, the average time whenever we receive that lead to appointment is 13 months. Hmm. 13 months, just let that sink in for a second. Thir that's setting the appointment. So how many opportunities are you or we missing if we're not, constantly communicating with our database. And this is what happens when markets get really good, people forget to do that. And if you talk to agents in the market right now, what, did, what happened to them? 2021, if you can see me right here, 2021, they're peaking with the market. The ones that are pretty good, right? Pretty, that kind of, you know, pretty good. Sort of flattened out in the first quarter, right? Still doing good, right? But this is their second quarter. And it's about 30 to 35% down for what I'm seeing in the data for the agents. And when you talk about, like, I was talking to a $20 million producer just yesterday. At this time, uh, last year, same month, he had 18 pendings. He's got two and they're closing out in the next, like, three or four days. Mm. Enough for the rest of the month. Powerful. That's it. So... Thank you for telling that story and for having that data ready. I would love to dive in a little bit deeper on that data. So you mentioned from, you know, Google LSA, PPC, from some of our betas, like appointment leads, you know, for being a, a, a you know, buy lopo, you know, top spender, you get access to some of that stuff. You have so many that are also pending past that. So that's realized revenue, the 4.8. Do you consider lifetime value? So not only the unclosed, but for that 4.8 return on, on, uh, investment do you also consider their future referrals their future transactions so do you calculate lifetime value when it comes to your clients and that's not just worth that first commission check 
but this is a relationship over a 5, 10, 20 year period. They're going to move a couple times, refer a couple people. Is that a calculation you have? Yeah. Yeah. And so it's really, I mean, for me, it's an, it's an easy mathematical equation because every client is really over the lifetime is really three, you know, three so I mean, yeah, three transactions. Okay. Yeah. So three transactions. And that's how I mean, it's kind of a basic number that I've ran over the years. And so if you want to do easy math right there, 4.8 is basically it's right at five, right? So that's a 15 X return. Right. But then, but then we're not even talking about the, the, the database out there. Which when I told you when I told you sixty five closings with a database based on a conversion would be forty five of those hot swarms and nurtures, so that four point eight could really be like a nine point two, right? So if you multiply that by three, so it's just you're you're think I mean it, you're what you're speaking to is thinking exactly the way you should and growing a business, and I think that's where folks starting a business or or kind of they get into it maybe they get ahead of themselves and forget about that because it's, it's a marathon. You know, I love running yeah. sprints myself, but it is a marathon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, yeah. and if we take a step back and put our marketing hats on for a second, Ryan Dice from digital marketer, one of the biggest digital marketing companies in the world. And, you know, it does a lot of training and conference talking. Ryan Dice says he who can spend the most or she who can spend the most to acquire a customer wins. And yeah. when, when you understand the lifetime value concept that Scott and I were just talking about, you are more comfortable today spending more and continuing to spend when, in, during downturns or fluctuations to acquire a new customer. Because you know, if you build that relationship, do everything that you're designed to do, that your systems do what they're designed to do, well, that's actually gonna be three transactions. So then you just multiply that commission check by three over the next 10 years, that's a real revenue if you're honest about what's going to happen, you know, don't be too short sighted. And that's kind of the moral of the story there is even if things fluctuate a little bit, stay consistent, keep chipping away, keep the systems that are prospecting for you, right? Curtis <laughs> prospecting yeah. solves everything. Uh, right. Keep those systems live. So yeah. yeah, I appreciate you diving into that, Scott. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, really, really great point, Jeff. And um, Very you know, just, good. just, just uh, hearing you talk about that, you know, I know for me, sometimes uh, it, it, I heard Howard teach, Howard, the founder of, one of the founders of Y Lobo, teach on database marketing, like, I think it was like eight times before it really hit me. But I came to Y Lobo with, it was somewhere between four to 6,000 leads in 2016. And six years <laughs> now, I've got 152,000 people in my CRM. Wow, like, I've made a buster. Well, when people were going out of the business, I buy their database. Like I'm, I'm obsessed because I get it now. I'm like, oh, this is so much easier. Like I don't have yeah. to depend on the market or anything. Right. There's good lots of people. Yeah, right. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> you know, I mean, you agree, right? I mean, from a marketing yeah. perspective, it just makes no. more and, sense. And that, and that's where those those database builders come in. You know, those Facebook leads, those Google leads, as opposed to paying. Zillow, you know, or, you know, I'm just going to pick on the portal as opposed to paying Zillow 300 bucks and, and probably like 35% of your commission or whatever the agreement is with them, you know, per lead, you could instead be for a fraction of the cost. As we all know that our Wilo customers, you bought into this methodology for five, $10, $15, depending on your market, you could be adding to your database transactions, 12 months, 18 months out, and just filling the top of the funnel in the pipeline consistently for a fraction of the cost. And, and, you know, also, you're in control of that. You're not feeding a beast that's trying to replace you. So, I mean, from a marketing standpoint, it's just, it's a no brainer. And that is such a testament, Barry. That's crazy. I didn't know you had 6,000 leads or er, er, database contacts six years ago, because I've only known Barry with 150,000, you know, <laughs> of, of the wild. recent year or two we've been working together. Um, and that's from my local. That's wild. Yeah. Awesome. Well, and, you know, um, and so I, I, some different ways that I did that for those watching, like LinkedIn, um, mm -hmm. I grew my LinkedIn following to like 14,000. Um, when agents joined the team, we had, a, we still have a database migration process where we have them actually import their, their contacts into our CRM. Um, and we make them the lead source of sphere. We don't use the stage of sphere, but the lead source sphere. And for those that have really big spheres, we actually create 
a pond just for them and we say like the agent's name and then pond but where i'm i'm when i say i'm obsessed with database building i am very like i get it now um mm -hmm. you know there's you because you can email a hundred thousand people that have engaged with your content before and that that you know it does it's you don't have to be very good to get a lot of activity off of it um and so for those watching, I think, you know, it makes a lot of sense. Curtis, now you said your database size, you guys have actually grown it a lot, but you said, what was the amount again? We're about 20,000 right now. About 20, yeah. Like mm -hmm. oh, over 5,000, that's, G always says that's the Mendoza line. And, and Jeff, you'd be able to speak to that better than I would. But, you know, with remarketing, it seems like that's where the numbers really start to, to multiply for people. No, absolutely. I mean, the more the better and it's so inexpensive to get in front of them but it's just a, a marketing standpoint you know you don't truly own it until you have their email and phone number because facebook can change this google can change that right remarketing um, can be limited in certain ways or, or whatever it might be we're going into the cookie apocalypse is is what we're uh kind of <laughs> going into uh where you know tracking people across sites will be more limited yeah. as for, first party data becomes more and more important First party data means have people submitted a form and given you their first name, last name, phone, email, built out entire buyer profiles, seller profiles. And that's part of that dynamic registration move that YLOPO has made over the last 12 months is, you know, we're not just getting first name, last name, phone, email leads. Uh, we're, we're getting 17 data points on their buyer preferences, on, you know, their, their uh, mortgage history, things X, Y, Z, so that you have entire profiles they've given to you. And you can now talk to, email, follow up, use predictive analytics. Like there's so much we can do with that now. And it's really important to, to just keep all this in mind as we're moving forward into a different landscape, right? And it gives you the control. And that's really what it, what it comes down to is data, you know, Barry mentioned, it's so much easier just build a massive database and now you can just pull gold out of it forever, right? And it just it gets to a critical mass where it starts to then just feed itself because you, you get a transaction, you get referrals, you get this, you get that, and it just continues to grow. Um, and to help get it to that critical mass, you know, why help us here to do that? Well, and we've had in my market, I'd be interested, Scott and Curtis, we've had about a thousand people give up their license in the last 12 months um, in, our, in our area. We went from like 8,700 to 7,700 people that have their real estate license. And that's, that's just because real estate, it was hard to get a deal under contract because we didn't have enough homes for sale. Have you guys seen like a decline in licensed agents in your market or has it stayed steady? Yeah, a little bit of one for sure. Yeah. We, we, yeah. we kind of get, we don't really gauge it so much as like looking up the license, but we see by how many people are reaching out to us to uh, interview to like join our team, right? We used right. to get them all the time during COVID. It's just like, just got my license. Want to talk to you guys about joining the team every other day. Now we get maybe one every three months, which is beautiful. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's a trend that, you know, we'll continue to see as a downturn occurs, a lot of the industry that are using this as a second job, they do one or two transactions a year, they'll, a lot of them will not renew yeah. their licenses, not do continuing education, you know, they're not in it to build a business. And right. uh, many YLOPO customers that are, you know, either small or big teams, but they see the vision and they're investing in long-term success, they're going to be the ones sticking around. And guess what? Marketing costs go down actually, because when, when those that let the fear dictate what they do actually do cancel their marketing, you're not bidding against them now. So to serve the same ad to the same person, it's actually a few pennies less. And if you extrapolate that over thousands of impressions, you're paying a dollar, two dollars, three dollars less per lead. We're already seeing it. We're already seeing even major buyers like Zillow pull out of certain markets. And when they pull out, you can see the auction impression share. They used to have 40%, now it's zero. Boom, you have way less expensive leads and it happens on a uh, smaller scale when smaller buyers bail out to, oh, I'm gonna cancel that spend. Uh, I, you know, I don't wanna continue this, I don't wanna continue that. It starts to happen and it happened during COVID. It happened March, April, May. Tons of people cut marketing, didn't know it was gonna happen. Those that stuck with the course noticed a CPL drop. So it's, the opportunities are still out there. People are still searching. It's a really important thing to take note of during this shift is if you do stick with it, you're, you're going to reap the benefits. 
I think it's a good point to talk about as well. Not enough people mention it is there's two different ways to look at a business. You either work in the business or on the business and you really mm-hmm. need to be doing both as you build it. You're in the business is converting, talking to buyers, talking to sellers, but on the business is spending time actually formulating a game plan to build a database like Barry was talking about or acquiring databases or whatever the case may be. And uh, not enough people spend time on that. And we definitely got away from it during COVID as well. I mean, we we're just inundated with people that wanted to buy and sell. And so we're so worried about converting and not looking, you know, forecasting for the future as much as we should have been. Well, yeah. and you know, um, there's all these AI um, data mining companies now that, you know, you can take your database and you can say, okay, you know, tell me, what you about the people that are in my system, who's likely to move versus who isn't. There's a lot of different companies that do this. And so what one of the things we've tried to do is we, we made the decision to trust that that data was correct and spend more money on that subset of people that AI was telling us is likely to move. And, you know, there's even others where while Opo's testing where, uh, they took my database, analyzed everything that's closed, and then found people that matched our closings and said, Hey, you need to call these people. Cause they're similar to these people. <laughs> and nice. like, there's just so much, uh, available to you when you grow your database. Um, looks like Thomas is asking about, you know, what, what would you pay for somebody else's database? I know what I would pay. I don't know if you guys have a number, um, do you like a cost per lead or, or what have you? Um, obviously it depends on the agent, right? If they're, mm-hmm. if they're, if they're, like a scrub or not. Um. <laughs> it depends on the data itself. I mean, we're really intentional. We're secondary home market, right? So we're very intentional about not just getting the address that they bought or sold here with us and the email addresses of their spouses and all that good stuff, right? But what other homes do they own on their monopoly board? They might own six houses across the United States. Yeah. And, you know, so we need to know that information so we can refer them. I mean, we refer people from Las Vegas to Phoenix and we don't work either of those markets, right? So, you know, just having those conversations. So the data is, it's not as simple as like, hey, it's a dollar per lead and we'll give you a royalty or anything like that it's a deep dive and they have to be willing to share that information and we've only had a handful of those conversations candidly with candidates because not enough people actually want to relinquish their information to let you look at it and really dive into it Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. i mean great scott were you you gonna say something now i just i'm gonna give you a plug in for like all the things that we're talking about um i have a director of growth her name's alex and i said alex let me ask you something i said and, you know, she's, as we were rebranding, she's helping, you know, grow the team, right? And I said, tell me about the conversations with agents six to eight, 10 months ago, and tell me about the conversation now. Well, the conversation a little while back was the agents had it all figured out, right? Heads are big, everything's going, everything's going great. They've got it figured out. You guys are amazing, but we're not interested. We love you, but not interested, right? The conversations now over the last 60 United Days are like, Tell me more about what you're doing. Oh, you actually have a database. Oh, you actually communicate with it. Oh, you actually like pull like you, your database, you sell things out of it, right? You have a daily plan. You have ISAs that are in it. And it's a, it's a thing because you're seeing the evolution of folks evolve back to people that have built, because we're on the database conversation, that have built databases and are doing something with it. So the plug for somebody out there now say they're a solo agent and have a, you know, to use Jeff's point, have a vision forward of what they want to do, maybe build a team, start building your database. Cause I promise you what will happen over time. I can't tell you exactly when, but more and more people will be drawn to you because you've done that because your database is your business. Your business is your database. And the bigger your database is the bigger business you have. And the more folks that want to be a part of that business. You know, I mean, right now we're not, very, we're not one I think Barry said 150, we're 50, 50,000 and growing and growing rapidly. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's, it's so important. Your database is a business, business is your database, but people and agents that actually want to do something that have some drive and determination, discipline, they want to be a part of that because that gives them opportunity and somebody that's built it and is deep diving into it, communicating it. They're also learning. They have opportunities but they're also learning how to build their own within your ecosystem and within your, within your team, they can build their own databases. And so it's a real thing. And it's like the conversations eight months ago are totally different, but this is what happens in real estate and business period. Like how, what happens in industry? How do, how do businesses grow? They merge together. 
they merge business, they merge databases like we're talking about mm -hmm. and the businesses grow, right? So our conversations now in our market are with amazing people that they want to figure out how to be a part of a company that actually builds a real database. And so they can consistently build their business and not do the real estate roller coaster. They can go just, just like this, you know, and, and we don't have any agents on our team. No, no agents have done this. Every single one of them are just, just going just like this mm -hmm. business because of the database and the mindset around it, the communication and us sticking to actually making sure that we're doing it at a high level tweaking. We're not perfect. We're tweaking every day. And our whole team is bought into that concept. And it's a lot of fun to do it, but you got to take care of today and you got to know where you're going tomorrow. Love that. Absolutely. Yeah. I Love mean, that. I think if as a team, your, your value proposition, you know, is really the opportunities that you can provide and the systems that you have in place, whether yeah. the agent knows that or not, that's truly what they're coming for. They're coming for coaching, culture, other things, but you know, they'll pay way more for an opportunity than they will a lead. And Zillow's proven that they showed it. They made us yeah. do it right. I mean, you used to pay per lead or by impression and it was X and the cost per lead was much, much lower. Now it's 35%, right? And agents are happy to sign up which is yep. crazy to think about. So as a team owner, if you're trying to build a team, the opportunities that you can provide, agents will change their split or share, however you articulate it on your team. We call it shares, not splits. Uh, right. And so, you know, your split, um, you know, they'll, they'll change their split real quick if you can provide enough opportunity. And we always say in our team is systems run businesses, people run systems. You know, yep. You're not really running a business. You're running a system and the system's running your business for you. And so the sooner you can realize that and start forecasting and build it, a system for the future uh, makes the database management so much easier. And I could, I could listen to you guys talk about this like all day, seriously. <laughs> no, because this type of conversation, this is the type of conversation that needs to take place. You know, successful people talk about this stuff. They talk about concepts and ideas and um, it's just, it's really good. Um, so Thomas, I would spend 50 cents, uh, a lead depending on the database size, depending on the quality age, um, the formatting, all that stuff. Um, I'm not in a second home market. Uh, and so it's, it's a little bit easier for me to, to make that decision. Um, and then we do have a question from Matthew about importing other people's database. Um, so yeah, it, it's a mass lead import. If you get a, a large spreadsheet uh, converted to us, they call it CSV, and uh, you import it into Follow a Boss, and then you uh, send that same attachment to Ylopo and say, hey, I just imported these into Ylopo or into Follow a Boss. I want them to be in Ylopo stars and you uh, tell Ylopo what you want to happen with these contacts. Will you let Raya reach out to them? Do you want them to see Facebook ads? Do you want to send them listing alerts? There's a concept of welcome email, like, hey, we just launched this new site. We'd love for you to see it. Um, the delivery rate of Ylopo's emails is uber high, like insanely high. So, um, you know, I'm not saying just send it to anybody, but I would err on sending it to anybody you can because they're going to get it and they're going to click on it and they're going to opt in. And uh, every time I do that, I, my priority alerts light up like a Christmas tree. <clears throat> awesome. What are you hey, guys doing respect... with your priority alerts? Sorry, Jeff. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no worries. Uh, in respect of time, you know, we can go a little over, uh, but I just want to drop this right now. Uh, in order to learn more or ask questions, we want to serve our Ylopo community to a higher degree during this shifting market. So, you know, if you're interested in booking a general consultation call with a Ylopo marketing expert, click the link in the chat. Basically, totally free. You're a Ylopo customer already. Just come in, see what you're doing right now today. And if you had questions about things we dropped in this webinar, dynamic registration, the appointment leads beta when that's coming out, uh, you know, remarketing. Am I, it, there was a case where at, at the EXP shareholder meeting, Gabe came across a guy who said, you know, I think I might cancel Ylopo. And he realized that he was only remarketing 5,000. It was a 100,000 person database. And Gabe was like, what are you doing? And so he educated him. He started remarketing the whole 100,000. He's back online. So if you have questions, then click that link, 
book a meeting. We're here waiting for you to answer these questions. And just wanted to drop that before the, the one hour mark on the webinar. And uh, now happy to continue and you know answer questions, open it up for questions or you know, Barry, take it, take it away where you're going to. No, take. yeah, I'm so glad you did that, man. That was really, really thoughtful and smart. So I appreciate you. Um, uh, question I had for the two group guys, and I know you guys have to go, um, but um, priority alerts. If you were to summarize what you guys are doing with old leads that are coming back to your website, what do you do with them? Call, text, email, same day. <clears throat> So, and, and the, the call text and the email from Curtis for you vibe to it, or is it like everything else or? Sorry, like, I cut out there a little did bit. Did you change the script at all? Oh, do you change the script at all or? Uh, it kind of depends. We don't really let them know that we saw that they were looking at houses. That's a little weird, right? People don't like to know that they're being tracked, uh, yeah. but we're just reaching out to see if they, they have, you know, regained interest in looking in Palm Springs real estate that kind of thing and just kind of open up a very basic real estate related conversation. And usually they'll be like, well, I was looking around, seeing what prices were at or blah, blah, blah. Right. And then we can kind of just start to pre-qualify them from there. But we're, we're reaching out to every single one of them. Even if we just called them four days ago and they haven't been responsive at all, we'll just call them again. Cause we know they're looking at stuff. Nice. Scott. Yeah. Same thing. Call text email. We're dropping voicemails. Um, anybody that's, you know, anybody that's coming back a hundred percent, like, you know, Octum also is helping us with making sure that we're identifying any of those gaps, anybody we're not communicating with. And so Travis, our lead ISA, who you guys know, he's just, you know, you know, I think he's, if not the best in the business, probably top, top three or something. He's, he's unbelievable, but he makes sure every day that we don't have any drop balls with Octum with any of the communication. Um, you know, we're dropping the voicemails, text call. We're heavy on texting and calling, dropping voicemails. But of course we also use, uh, use email for sure. Yeah. It's just so, imp yeah. it's just, it's just so important. You can't, I mean, like I said, 13 months, right? 13 months. You you can't not, you can't let things slip through the cracks just because it's been a bit. Like you've got to stay the course. Yeah. And when I take the amount of money I'm spending on remarketing, on average, it, it, it varies some, but on average, it's about a dollar, a priority alert for me in my market, dollar 25 to a dollar. Yeah. So I'm able to take old leads or leads I bought from other people when they're going out of business. I'm running remarketing. I'm emailing listings as well to get them on my yeah. website. Yeah. And then I'm doing the same thing you guys are. I'm treating priority alerts like a new opportunity. That's basically yeah. what I'm hearing from you guys. And now I went from a cost per lead in 2016, believe it or not, $350, $400 a lead, which is why I had to figure something out. doesn't make right. any sense. Our market was more expensive than others for some reason, but I went from $400 an opportunity to a dollar. Like, and now That's I'm insane. able to scale a business off of that. Yep. So um, really, really great job, guys. Jeff, this is the first time I've been able to do this with you, man. You're really good at it. Oh, it well, hey, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I have some, some podcast experience. If you want to check out yeah. Lockbox podcast. Uh, we're like 150 episodes in. So oh, nice. Yeah, I've nice. done one or two of these. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind if I ever am on it or anything. No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's go. Let's get all I'm three of you guys on there. <laughs> I was say, you have my number. I put my number and uh, email in the chat in case anyone ever wants to reach out or has questions about how we do things here. Happy yeah, you guys have been super gracious with your time, and I can tell that uh, you're legit. Go ahead, Jeff. I have I have a couple things. Yeah. So uh, number one. Margie, who's been commenting back and forth, let me know via chat that, you know, appreciate the discussion, full speed ahead, needed to hear this from you. P.S. Closing Owalopo, $6.35 million lead from January 2022 tomorrow. Ooh. Wow. Congratulations. So, that's the first thing. Awesome, Margie. Congrats. That's huge. Hot news for sure. And that's probably uh, a $30 lead too. Right, lead on that probably thirty bucks. Yeah, with with a couple pennies to remarketing and then done. Yeah. Um, and then next is there was a question: Is this general consultation with a marketing expert at Ylopo? Is there a, a fee? There is no fee. No. Well, we're offering this as additional service. Just you know, click it, book, totally free. And you know, we want to help you to game plan this this next six months, twelve months. Make sure that you're spending in the right areas and uh, being really smart and investing in your future. So. Uh, that's it for me. And then Curtis, you, Curtis had a couple questions in the in the Q and A. Did you see those? About did you already uh, answer these? I didn't know. Um, so what are top three lead sources for these guest speakers? And then does Curtis and his team have an SEO strategy? 
Um, so for lead sources, uh, it's a trick question. We look at it actually as paid or unpaid on our team. Um, so uh, like our top three though, just across the top are a referral from agent, referral from past clients and just repeat business from past clients, which we split up. Um, so that's been the top three for us. And then paid is like local service ads, some of the Google stuff we're doing. And then as far as SEO goes, uh, we do have an SEO strategy. Uh, we backed way off of SEO and we were spending oh, like $1,300, $1,400 a month at one point. Uh, but with local service ads, they changed the game. Like if you look up the word agent, real estate near me or any sort of fashion of that, uh, it shows up above everything, Google pay-per-click, the whole nine. So it doesn't do as much impactful work as it used to, but because we're a secondary home market, people do their research ahead of time. And so we're really focusing on key topics that people are going to research before they buy or sell here. And we're focusing our content around that. So we can hopefully catch people really early in the research phase to have a conversation with us. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for answering those. How about you, Scott, for top three? Yeah, man. So Walopo, um, uh, referrals from agents, and then our past clients' referrals. I mean, that's what we we stay. We just got off of all the other. We just got off of all the other portals. We do some on Facebook, right? And we've kind of grown that a little bit. But uh, really, just we're really dialed into the Walopo, like the Google PPC, click to appointments. Um, we do a lot of referrals, like Curtis was saying, a lot of referrals. We we market to our referral partners all over the country. So that's a big deal because you know the return there is, is huge. And, uh, you know, past clients and, and of course, that's, that's your database, right? That's that, that's that one equals three. Can I just um, say how happy I am that you like Octum? Because I love Oh, Octum. man. Yeah, we love it. Yeah. Yeah, we love Curtis, it. Curtis, we need to get you on Octum too, man. Yeah, I'm not on there yet. I need to look into that. Yeah. Yeah, and we should just do a whole training on that. There were some questions in the chat, like, what's Octum? I'm like, we do not have time today. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's yeah. outside the scope of this webinar, but um, right. more, to, more to come on Octum. Hey, we're, we're an hour and six minutes in and we not only had a phenomenal discussion, we also fielded some extra questions and I'd say that's a pretty concise webinar. So oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, fantastic discussion today. Any, any final thoughts before we call it a day? Um, I'm just really glad and, and uh, very grateful to be surrounded by such uh, successful and intelligent people. And I'm not just trying to make you feel good, who you're with matters. And so I appreciate yep. the partnership. Appreciate you guys having us on. All right. Sounds yeah, good, man. guys. Have a great day. All right. All right. See yeah. you guys. Take care.